All right, joining us this afternoon is the Global Director of Ford Performance Motorsports, Mr. Mark Rushbrook. Um, Mark, we've got a good group of uh, media on the call. Uh, if you've got a question, please uh, raise your hand or ask uh, in the chat and I can ask your question if you're not able to, to speak uh, through your device. But um, Mark, let me just kick it off. Obviously, Michigan this weekend, it's a big week for all the OEMs, but uh, Ford in particular, great success, seven straight wins on the cup side going into Sunday's race and uh, the winningest manufacturer in all time uh, at MIS. And just your thoughts on as you get ready for this weekend at Michigan. Yeah, well, every race weekend for NASCAR is a big weekend, um, but especially Michigan uh, as our home race, as a manufacturer with our, our employees, our families, our executives, uh, there's a lot of pressure on us to, to win every race, but especially here at Michigan and in front of all, all of those people. So um, it's important for our teams too. They know it as well. Uh, so looking forward to having everybody there and, and putting on a good race. And there are obviously a lot of things, ancillary things besides just the race itself. What other kinds of things do you guys have going on this weekend? Yeah, we, we have a lot of activities going on uh, with a lot of our team members coming out there, like I said, because they're there. Uh, we do a lot of uh, special things like the Girls in Engineering Academy, which is a program that we've been putting on here in Dearborn uh, for, for that local academy to help introduce high school girls to engineering and the automotive industry and, and motorsports as part of that. So we'll actually have them out of the race as well and show them how we go racing as a manufacturer and, and let them see our, our tech trailer as well. And then obviously our activation out there with all of our vehicles on display and, and really engaging with all the, the fans as well. So a lot going on out there. And I also know there's some 20 year master techs from Motorcraft who are gonna be honored throughout the weekend and approximately over 270, they're actually gonna be on the 21 car. So lots of good things going on this weekend. Yeah, I was just going to say that's been an important program uh, for our Ford customer service division and, and leveraging the, the Wood Brothers car, the, the company car, and um, taking advantage of recognizing those employees that, that are so important to who we are as a company and interfacing directly with our customers and the dealership. All right, well, we got them lined up here, so I'm just going to take them in order here. And uh, Lee Spencer, you're up on the top of my board, so why don't you kick us off? Appreciate your time. Um, Mark, I, I had asked uh, Fancit earlier last month to run this by you, but um, since I didn't hear back, I'm hoping to find out what you can tell me about GM poaching a couple of your simulation engineers from the R&D Center and just trying to get those positions refilled or other positions refilled you know, has it been difficult to get the drivers in and out of, of um, you know, getting time in the sim? Uh, no specific comments on employees moving. That, that does happen all the time in, in all directions between the manufacturers and, and teams. So uh, part of the business. Um, but with, we're, we're staffed. We're open for business at our tech center with, with our simulator and our aero program and analytics and, and everything that happens there. So We've got a great team of employees and uh, they're all working really hard to, to have performance on the track and bring home the race wins. I mean, for a long time, you guys had to have really ironclad contracts with crew chiefs, um, you know, pit crews. For a while there, there were people taking other people's pit crews. With everybody now having R&D centers in Charlotte, are you kind of running across that same thing where you really have to, you know, tighten up the ship? Yeah, talent is maybe the most important thing in this sport, right? Because the cars don't go fast without the people to make them go fast. So that is important to us um, to recruit, attract the best employees that we can and to retain them. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Let's go to Jim Utter. Go ahead, Jim. Hey, Mark, how are you doing? Good, Jim. How are you? Good. <clears throat> I apologize putting you on the spot for this first question, but I was wondering is there any room at the Ford Cup Series in for someone like Kyle Busch? And is he someone that you would be interested in seeing if you had one of your teams had the opportunity to get it? Yeah, we um, obviously drivers are, are super important. We're very happy with the lineup of teams that we have with the, the drivers that we have now and, and the plans within the teams. 
and uh, no specific comment on Kyle at the moment. And uh, second question, uh, Lee had asked uh, Brad Kozlowski earlier today um, about the issues regarding the penalties that we've had this year for some of the teams uh, making alterations to the to parts. And he said he would actually like to see NASCAR start doling penalties out like candy uh, to prevent teams from uh, going down that path because he he said it was sort of like a that's a big expense and they need kind of need kind of left the impression that they need to be prevented from pursuing that area. I just wondered what your thoughts were on how NASCAR has been policing that aspect of the next gen car so far. Honestly, it's hard to say because only NASCAR sees everything across all the different teams, but I do agree with the spirit of what the next gen model is and, and how the only way next gen can be successful in the sport is if the rules are enforced, that the teams use the common parts as they're built by the suppliers and delivered to their shops and put onto the race cars. Um, so that rule was put there for a reason. And for the model of next gen to work, NASCAR needs to enforce that rule to lay out the penalties when they're deserved. I don't know if it's like handing out candy because you give that to people whether they deserve it or not. But um, <laughs> penalties uh if somebody is modifying a part or putting something on that they shouldn't then nascar needs to be handing out the penalties and as consistently as possible that's always hard to do and there's always different magnitudes uh of any violation and and they've got to be the ultimate judge and, and juror of of what the appropriate penalty is within the the rules as written thank you very much all right thank you jim Let's go to Bob Pockris. Hey, Bob. Hey, Mark. Uh, thanks for joining us. I'm curious, you know, at the start of the year, after NASCAR made the changes to the cars, they took everybody to the wind tunnel. It seemed like the Fords obviously had made some tweaks before the start of the year. Uh, how much did those, have those tweaks impacted performance and impacted potentially some of the struggles the four teams have had? Um, yeah, I don't think our, our struggles that we've had this season uh, are related to that. The, the process uh, that NASCAR has to submit your car and, and get inside the, the box for parity is, is a good, robust process. Um, certainly coming online with an all new car and the need to revisit that just before the start of the season was the right thing to do for the sport. And uh, everybody's inside that box and uh, we feel there's a, a parity, a, a Play, an equal playing field for all three manufacturers to compete. And it's my understanding that team that manufacturers could uh, submit new noses for by August one for next year. I'm curious, were, were you guys able to do that? And if so, do you think? I guess the second part of the question is: Do you feel like any improvements for that your organizations can make as a whole? Are they reliant on any types of changes to the nose, or do you feel like you ha can make? significant improvements through the rest of this year? Um, certainly we will have changes for next year, but still within the box for, for parity. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Bob. Uh, Dustin Long, NBC. Hey, Dustin. Hey, thank you. Uh, a couple of things, three, two or three things, Mark. Um, in, in, in the light of Kyle Busch, if a Ford team were interested in Kyle Busch, certainly one of the things that makes it a little bit unique from any other driver was he certainly has the, the, the truck operation. Is in, in is there an interest or, or, or is there a way to incorporate the, that type of truck operation into the Ford camp if that if those talks, if there were such talks that led to Kyle Busch in a Ford car? Their interest in that in that truck program, or is that? Uh, it's breaking up a little bit for me. I don't know if it was for everybody, but yeah. maybe Dustin. The end of that question dropped off. But I think the question was around Kyle Bush and his. You truck want me to ask it me. again? No, no I, I think just the end dropped off. But so let me answer it, I guess, and and just if you need to follow up, that's certainly fine. So, um, I guess how I would answer that is. Any time we have an opportunity to improve our program, whether it is with drivers at a, a certain level in, in NASCAR or 
or teams at all the levels in NASCAR, then that's certainly something that is our responsibility to consider and, and make decisions on how it makes our program better or, or doesn't. So certainly would consider all options. And just from a personal standpoint, would you want would you want Kyle Bush? Uh, that that's not for me to answer. <laughs> not from a personal perspective. Uh, what what do you see in terms of your, the you reference the struggles this season? And what how do you assess the performance this year for group? Mark, I'll step in there. I think how how do you assess the performance? Because Kelly Crandall has a question similar. Is how do you assess the overall state of four performance right now in August uh, with four wins to this point? Yeah, four wins is not enough. It's not acceptable. Um, we need to get more wins. We need to have drivers further up the, the standings and and hopefully at least four, if not more drivers into the playoffs, certainly going to be hard with where we are with only only four regular season races left. So it's been a struggle with the new car, the new package, with getting our our head around it and, and how to set it up properly, going to the track and, and optimizing it. And we've seen a, a lot of success with speed at different tracks. Um, where we have understood it, but we still didn't still didn't bring the win home. So a lot of work to do, uh, but that's racing. There, we always need to make all elements of the, the car better, the, the engine, the aerodynamics, the chassis, the setup, the tire model, our simulator model. And, and that's what we're working on. We have a, a lot of meetings and, and advancements with our teams to, to try to do better every week. And Kelly had a follow-up, and you, you kind of touched on this with it being a, a different track uh, specific, but but has there been one big struggle of the Ford teams that everyone is trying to work out? Is it something that all the teams are having similar struggles in the same area? Um, honestly, no, it's it's been different. With, with the t we've had different strengths across different cars at the different tracks, and that's, I think, part of the struggle is this car is so sensitive that even when – one team is taking four cars or, or two cars to the same track with very small differences. You'll see one near the, the top of the board and, and two or three or four down, down the other end of the board. So that's part of it, just understanding how sensitive it is and making sure we can really find the, the optimum spot uh, for these cars to run. Again, if you've got a question for Mark, please raise your hand. Uh, Lee Spencer has a follow-up, Mark, so we'll go back to Lee. Mark, you made it sound like, you know, all areas really need improvement. I mean, have you specified just one? I mean, going back to my original question, um, you know, it appears that Hendrick Motorsports, or at least from their engineering or their engine department, um, you know, grabbed a guy from Roush Yates. So, I mean, you know, this kind of goes back to it being a, a constant struggle to keep you know, good people in place, but I'm just wondering, is it engine? Is it aero? Do you need more testing? We ask the drivers and the teams all the time, do you want to, do you want more practice? Do you want to test more? And there's that balance of, of cost versus what your rewards are from that. And just kind of looking at your assessment. Yeah, honestly, as I, as I just said, it for the last question, it's, we've got to get better in all areas because if you're, equal in every area you're exactly that you're only equal in every area so we want to have the best engine the best arrow which means the least drag the most downforce um the best chassis setup which means really understanding the the tire model and how to optimize ride head right heights and and all the settings in the suspension so it's racing. We've got to advance all of those to be the best in every area because the competition is so close. And if you're off in just one area, um, then you're not going to win the race. And again, as we go to different tracks, whether it's a super speedway versus a road course, there are different strengths and weaknesses because of the different engine packages um, and the different setup required on the car. And I mean, you've seen with this new car, um, you know, some of the things we've seen, like a Michael McDowell um, and a Chris Buescher emerge where before, you know, it might have been a Blaney year, it might have been a Harvick year, um, you know, Logano's been wishy-washy, is, you know, it has, if 
the car's done one thing. Has it been interesting to see some guys that you thought have potential finally break through? It, I think it's been great for the sport. Um, as a fan, it's been some of the best racing we've, we've ever had. Um, because of the excitement, you don't know who's going to be at the front as you go to every race weekend. So I, I think that's been really, really good. But the cars are so much closer. And with change comes opportunity. And great drivers that maybe didn't have the right opportunity with the old car, this plays into their wheelhouse. And they've got a great opportunity with this car. So it, it, I think it's, again, good for the sport to have different teams, different drivers at the front. Thank you. All right, Lee, let's go back to Bob. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, Mark, I mean, I'm sure you know the history of the sport. Like if the Fords were running kind of this way 10 or 15 years ago, there'd be, you know, pounding on the NASCAR hauler, right? Give, uh, we need, you know, this uh, concession or that this needs to change mid-season. I'm curious, uh, do you still have those type of discussions or is that just not part of the culture anymore? And, or do you just not feel like you, you need those discussions because you have confidence in what the wind tunnel numbers say. And if you make a few tweaks on what you can do, that you'll be running uh, overall more competitive. Yeah, there's, in my opinion, the, the pounding on the hauler isn't the right way to go about it because the, the sport has changed. The, the rules are the rules and everybody's got to race within those rules. Um, so we just need to optimize within those rules like all the teams are. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'll make one last uh, call. Anybody got one last question for Mark? Going once. Going twice. Dustin Long comes in under the wire. You get the last question. Go ahead. Sorry, but hey, Mark, I don't think we've heard from you, but obviously with NASCAR um, going to Chicago, thoughts about that in a year where they're, um, you know, they've certainly added L.A., more presence in L.A., and what more you might like to see or might help you guys in the future in terms of markets? Yeah, I think it's fantastic, right? What NASCAR did with uh, the Clash and the L.A. Coliseum was a great experiment with, with a great positive result. And that's what the sport needs is experimentation, trying different things. Some will work, some won't, and that's okay. But certainly the Clash and the Coliseum did. And again, to see NASCAR now going to a NASCAR street course is, I think, fantastic. It's a great market. It's an important market for us. We've got a, a plant there in Chicago um, and a lot of fans and, and customers in Chicago. So I think it's a great market to be in. And again, a very different race. Uh, that will be great for the fans there in person and great for the, the fans watching on the television as well or, or following it online. So we encourage NASCAR to keep doing that kind of experimentation, trying different things, new things, smart things, not just trying different things to try them, but in a smart way. And I think they are. And I think that needs to continue. Um, things like the all-star race, I think some improvements can be there can be made there as well in terms of the, the format and how to make it a real all-star race again. Um, but they're open to that. They're discussing that. So um, we're really encouraged with what we see and, and just ask for it to continue. How can an event like the all-star race, like you mentioned, impact you guys and, and, and what more can be done? I mean, look, you've been around. I mean, that's that thing's been changed so many different times and, and changed venues. I mean, what more is there left? Um. I, I don't know. That, that's part of the discussion. That, and it can be, again, taking some ideas, right? And these are just my ideas. Um, take it to a different market, just like we are, like just like we did with the Clash, somewhere very different. Because right now, um, or in recent history, the All-Star is in many ways very similar to any other NASCAR weekend, other than it's fewer drivers in the feature race and different stage lengths, um, different qualifying formats, stuff like that. And while that's interesting and entertaining, um, is it really different enough? So if we can go to a different track, if we can um, bring in different ideas, uh, bring in a former champion that's retired to come in and mix it up with the, the current drivers. And there's good things about doing that and there's some bad things about doing that. But um, that's what, I think people are talking about what can be done, what will work, um, 
and I'm sure that the sport will come to something and and see some see some changes there soon. Another thing uh, is obviously you're in it to sell cars, and um, you know there's certainly been some challenges in in, in getting cars and, and the backlogs and things like that. With with NASCAR certainly showing some improved ratings and and some signs of of some growth. Is that really much of an impact that you guys are seeing at this point, or is it something that's going to have to be kind of spread a little bit further on down the road as, as things become even better for, for your company and, and just the, the market in general? Yeah, well, like you said, we're selling every single car and truck that we can make right now, uh, partly because of the supply chain issues that, that everybody is struggling with in this industry and other industries. Um, but that doesn't mean we stop racing because we don't literally – race on Sunday, sell on the very next Monday, we, through racing, we, we connect in a very emotional, passionate way with our customers, with our fans, and, and we're a brand that's, that's top of mind for them and something that they believe in. And when they buy a new car or truck a year from now or five years from now, we want them to, to buy a Ford. And hopefully by then the supply chain issues are behind us and we're cranking out at full capacity. Um, so yeah, it's, it's important to be in this sport, con continue that, um, connection with our fans, with our customers and keep them in Ford's lifelong, um, whether it's a Mustang or an F-150, whether it's a combustion engine or an electric motor, um, it's important to be connected with them as a brand and, uh, go through, go through the journey with them. Thank you.